Alright guys and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be counting down the top 5 weird specs from Classic WoW. Just before we jump in guys, if you like my videos then do consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. I've been talking to a few people in the comments and apparently a lot of people didn't realise they weren't subscribed to the channel even though they watch my videos like every week so it does really help out. But anyway let's get on with it. So the first build I have for you is the Rogue Ghost build. I've talked about this build before because I kind of invented it back when I was leveling when Classic WoW was actually released, although I'm not claiming that I'm like the architect of this build, I'm sure people have used this build before me. But nonetheless, what it does is it focuses on avoidance and increasing your defensive capabilities rather than focusing on your offensive capabilities and increasing your DPS. And what I found was when I was leveling, it was a very efficient leveling build simply by the fact I was taking much, much less damage. And it was also very good at soloing elites, dealing with multiple enemies and just difficult encounters like that, and even solo soloing a few things in dungeons whether I wanted to do a certain dungeon quest on my own without doing a group. And overall I just found it like way more fun, primarily because you get an extra ability to use called Ghostly Strike and that's where it gets its name from. So Ghostly Strike does 125% of weapon damage and also increases your chance to dodge by 15% for 7 seconds. So first of all, this ability is really cool, gives you a cool animation and it makes some you know, rotation more interesting. And secondly, if you've got a fairly slow weapon, it actually does more damage than Sinister Strike and that increase to your dodge chance means that you can get up to about 60% avoidance when you use Ghostly Strike, which obviously masses, massively reduces the damage that you take. Other key talents that I used were lightning reflexes and deflection to increase your avoidance by an extra 10% which was really nice. I've also got repost which was really useful if you're dealing with enemies who actually have weapons and it's also a really cheeky DPS boost simply by the fact that it actually does 150% weapon damage and barely costs any energy. And I also picked up mace specialization because if you're dual wielding maces this does actually proc a lot and it's a 3 second stun and while the enemy is stunned they're not doing any damage to you. So that's really nice. And around about level 40, you can get the weapon called Wurt's Third Leg very cheaply off the auction house. I got it for like two gold. I bought two of them, enchanted them both, and it was doing like ridiculous damage. And again, this May specialization was a really useful talent. And apart from this, you pick up all the kind of typical talents like Blade Flurry, and you probably want to swap to Soil Specialization in the later levels when you're leveling. Um, yeah, you just pick up like the typical damage increasing combat talents. But anyway, let's move on to number two because we have the Warlock tank build. So the Warlock tank build focuses on stacking as much damage reduction as humanly possible and then throwing in a little bit of cheeky self-healing into the build too. With a few key talents you can very easily stack up to about 70% damage reduction, which is pretty ridiculous. You can very easily solo elites and dungeons or in the open world to make money or tank in dungeons, maybe even in raids if you really want to be that bold. Nonetheless, it is a very strong tanking build. The first key talent we have is Soul Link, which reduces the amount of damage that you take by 30% because that damage is transferred to your pet instead. And then we also have Master Demonologist, which reduces the physical damage you take by an extra 10%. So that's like a flat 40% damage reduction just from your talents, and it's going to stack with your armor rating and also Demon Shield. We also have talents like Demonic Embrace, a little bit of extra stamina, improved health stone for obvious reasons. Then we have talents which kind of boost the damage and the threat of the Void Walker because what you're going to be doing is you kind of buff the defensive capabilities of the Void Walker and also his ability to kind of ping pong talk, like ping pong aggro between you and the Void Walker because sometimes if you're taking too much damage or the Void Walker is taking too, too much damage, what you're going to have to do is kind of ping pong the aggro in order to survive. So What's really, if you if you play this build correctly, you essentially have two tanks. And then apart from this, we have improved Drain Life and Fell Concentration, which allows you to just spam cast Drain Life in order to keep yourself alive. And then we also have Nightfall, which means that if you because you, you have your dots on the target, and if when you're spamming Drain Life, it basically doubles the chance for Nightfall to proc, which is actually a pretty ridiculous damage increase because it's just going to proc pretty much like at least every 10 seconds, probably even less sometimes. And obviously the damage is instant and you don't have to hard cast a shadow bolt or anything like that, so it is a really useful 
DPS ability, DPS talent for when you are face tanking. You can also use the PvP gloves bonus which reduces the amount of cast interruption you get when you're casting Searing Pain by 50% which massively in increases your capability to tank at dungeons and at raid bosses. And lastly the set is further improved by the Nemesis gear, tier 2 gear because it also provides a pretty decent amount of health per second. For number 3 we have a Shaman tank build which is a bit of a fun build that you can use for flag carrying since Shamans are pretty good at flag carrying because of Ghost Wolf and actually have a lot of really cool defensive talents and it can be used in dungeons for tanking very easily maybe as a temporary off tank in raiding environments. What you'll notice if you look in the enhancement tree it's very strange but there's a number of tanking talents which feel more like warrior talents in the tree like shield specialization, anticipation, toughness and the parry talent which obviously are really strong defensive talents. Shaman was actually originally intended to be a bit of a tank build it just needs a little bit of extra oomph for it to actually become a actual viable raiding tank. I mean threat is never really much of an issue because you have earth shock which does like double the amount of threat generation than most abilities, you have rock biter weapon which generates a lot of threat, you also have really cool awesome talents like stone skim totem which reduces the amount of damage you take and you've got stone claw totem which is an aoe taunt which is quite interesting, shamans actually have an aoe taunt, and you've got earth bind for kiting, you've got fire nova totem for really awesome aoe threat, I mean threat is never an issue they just again need that little bit of extra like defensive capabilities in order for them to actually become a pretty strong main tank. At the moment they're more of a casual dungeon tank, flag carrier and then maybe temporary, very temporary raid tank. For number 4 we have the melee hunter. Now there's a few different versions of the melee hunter, you know there's a few niche leveling builds, alternative pvp builds where you, this guy um, dual wielding dragons call and spamming wing clip to get like a stompede of little green dragons which is pretty cool but the most common melee tanking build is actually a pretty popular one now and it's called the melee weaving raid build it's actually quite a viable way of increasing your dps in a raiding environment and a few professional very skilled hunters out there actually consider it to be a dps increase over you know, more standard raid build. So as you may know, in the Hunter's rotation, there is a little bit of downtime. And essentially what you do in the downtime of the rotation is you go into melee range, sneak in a little raptor strike, maybe a wing clip, a little melee hit, maybe even a trap, between your auto shots and the downtime of your rotation and what people have found is it's actually a pretty decent DPS increasing in tri trick in raid and even if you're not using it to increase your raid DPS it is actually pretty useful if you've totally run out of mana to weave in and out of a range shot and a melee shot to actually increase your DPS without using any mana consuming abilities. Obviously it is a bit of a pain in the backside to actually pull off and requires a lot of practice because it requires absolutely perfect timing but in some fights it actually will increase your DPS but in other fights it's probably not worth doing at all. There isn't that much of a difference when it comes to the talents, you pretty much will just use a standard raiding build although you're going to dip a little toe into the survival tree and pick up savage strikes which increase your critical to strike chance of raptor strike on mongoose bite by a total of 20 percent because the raptor strike crits particularly when you get a hunter weapon like Atish, uh, you are going to be doing some pretty ridiculous raptor strike critical strikes and lastly we have number five which is going to be the smite priest so the smite priest is a hybrid healing and dps build if you've ever played League of Legends, it's very similar to the hero called Soraka, who kind of does a lot of healing and buffing and also a fairly decent amount of damage herself. And that's what this build is all about. It's very useful in PvP because it has such a strong adaptive playstyle. If your te team needs healing, you can do really good healing. If your team doesn't really need that much healing, then you can help out with the damage. If a warrior or a mage is going absolutely ham then you can buff him with power infusion to increase his damage by like 20% and 
and you're overall just a really extremely useful player to have in a pretty typical pre-made PvP group. Most builds that I've seen will go deep into Discipline and dip a little toe into Holy, pick up talents like Syrian Light to increase your damage with Smite, Holy Reach to increase your range for obvious reasons, a little bit of cheeky Holy Nova because that's actually pretty good if you can't cast, got Blessed Recovery for a little bit of extra defensive capability, you obviously pick up Power Infusion, you've also got Force of Will stacked with Holy Specialization to increase your crit chance by 10% and then you can stack that with Inner Focus for a total of 35 increased critical you know, chance to get a critical hit, a little bit of defensive bonus with improved Inner Fire and just general talents that increase your defensive capabilities and you know, talents more tailored for PvP. You've also got the Martyrdom talent which is very useful for hard casting your smites. And if you look at um, you know footage on YouTube, a lot of people are making PvP videos out there and doing ridiculous damage with smite and holy fire. So I can definitely see the viability and the strength of this build. I honestly think it's probably one of the most useful PvP builds to bring into a pre-made. Anyway guys, that's where I'm gonna end the video there. My name is Metagoblin to my next video. Ciao.